Congresswoman Nan Hayworth. She's a Republican from New York, a member of the Financial Services Committee. So explain to me why the Speaker would hold this vote for something he doesn't have the support for, but even if he did, wouldn't have necessarily had any impact anyway. You know, Sullivan, it, I have every uh, bit of faith in the Speaker, and I've watched this entire process. He's really trying to do uh, the best he can under the circumstances for the American people, for everyone, 100% of the people we're serving. Uh, he's faced, we all know, with uh, an exceedingly difficult challenge. Um, and, and the fundamental fact is this, that we really do face uh, a terrible decline uh, in our economy if we don't have growth in the economy. And the only way to get growth, growth rates are not where they need to be for us to keep Americans employed, for us to keep uh, the great programs, the social safety net going and our defense going, unless we have better than 3% growth in the economy. The way to do that is to provide tax relief and regulatory relief, and the Speaker's been doing all he can to try to promote that cause Ron wants and get to that effectively done. Congress, let me ask you, first of all, Ten years after the Bush tax cuts were passed, there were fewer people working than on the day they were passed. So the idea that the tax cuts by themselves are a panacea is questionable. But on the more immediate choice you face, would you rather accept a deal that raised taxes on uh, voters above some level at this point, something lower than a million, or would you rather go over the cliff and see where uh, things stand in January? I mean, those seem to be the only choices that Republicans have uh, at this point. Well, it, the, it, I certainly, speaking only for myself, but I think there is uh, certainly a broad desire among uh, the House Republicans not to go over the cliff. We don't want to go over the cliff. What we want to do is provide every measure of relief that we can. Uh, so raising taxes in this economy, and the president said it to two years ago, he was absolutely right. Raising taxes in a bad economy is a very bad idea. Uh, so we're trying to work as as hard vote, as we can to relieve as much of that burden as possible. But the vote last night, right, yeah. said we will not raise taxes on people who are making under a million. We're raising them on people right. a million and above. So right. isn't the message from that vote we're not going to raise taxes? I mean, it did not it did not pass. I, sure. I'm, well, and in fact, you know, we we passed. Uh, a good couple of months ago, we passed a bill through the House to keep the 01 and 03 uh, tax relief going uh, for another couple of years while we approach broad reform. And I, I personally think that would be the best thing we could do. But I know uh, that the president feels very differently about that. And the speaker, of course, knows that as well. So he's trying to find that middle ground. But how is he trying to find middle ground if, if basically what the Republicans are saying is that they will not compromise in any way, no matter how high that threshold is raised on taxation? I mean, is it, is it part of governing, compromising at some level, giving away something that you love? I mean, it, right. it, is, is what's happening the Republicans saying, we will not no matter what, how high you raise this bar, give you a majority of the votes in the House for that. Well, is you know, it, that, is that what I'm hearing? Right. right. And, you know, Charles, we've seen this play out throughout the 112th Congress. Uh, of course, the majority in the House of Representatives in 2010 was elected uh, promising that they would, they could certainly, to provide tax relief and regulatory reform and long term growth for the economy and assurance that future generations will have great opportunities. Uh, that's still what we want to do. So, you know, we, we've always been facing this uh, challenge to the, between, you know, what's really, what's ideal. Uh, and what's and what's doable, you know, and and of course that that kind of theme we find in all aspects of life. Uh, Let me ask you so a question. Can I ask you a question? Yeah, sorry, Ron? I want to ask one okay, I'll ask you, and then you. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> sorry, I'm just trying yeah. to. So, so Republicans said yeah. we will not raise taxes, even if you're making over a million dollars, you will not have your taxes. Or at least not enough of them would. Right now, the question is though, a different deal might not need all the Republicans to vote for it because at a lower threshold, right. more Democrats would vote for it. My question to you, Congresswoman, can yeah. John Boehner hold his speakership if he brings to the floor? a budget deal that a majority of Republicans oppose and, and one that would pass with a majority of Democratic mm -hmm. votes. Could he hold his speakership if he did that? 
You know, I, I, that clearly is uh, an issue for the Republican conference in the 113th Congress to deal with. Um, I have had great confidence in the speaker's abilities to navigate very, very difficult uh, waters uh, in terms of policy and politics. Uh, this is uh, this will not be an easy uh, job going forward. That so, might be an understatement of 2012, <laughs> Congresswoman. I think he's that got is. a great temperament and a lot of institutional knowledge and a lot of common sense. So a big, big challenge. Nice to see you, Congresswoman Dan Hayworth, with us this morning. Have a nice holiday if you don't get a chance to talk to you before the new year.